Okay, this is going to be part two of our grenade series, and this is should be a lot shorter of a video. We're just going to go ahead and set up the animations and get those playing, and that's as far as we're going to get in this video. In the next one, we're going to actually add the impulse to the grenade to actually, well, throw it. So, to begin, let's go ahead and head over to our grenade assets, our grenade.h, and we want to create a animation that we want to play. So I'm going to copy this U property here paste it in and we're going to for declare a u animation asset this is going to be what animation we want to play when we spawn the grenade so i'm going to call this one throw animation i'm going to take this over to grenade.cpp and check so if throw animation we want to play it so grenade mesh play animation and the animation we want to play is throw animation and looping is no we don't want it to loop so we're going to pass in false so this should trigger our animation whenever it's spawned in the world and we can actually test that real quick i'm going to go ahead and build and relaunch the editor okay let's go ahead and drop this guy here in the world and open up the blueprint. And here we see our throw animation. So we're gonna go ahead and set that to grenade throw, It'll be this one. And hit simulate. So, as you saw, it just pulled the pin. Watch it one more time. Pin gets pulled. The grenade has that initial impulse. The impulse is actually handled through the animation and we're good to go so the animation's playing now we need to set it up for our first person so our arms so to do that i uh, went to create a montage so this is going to be the montage to throw the grenade now we already have it set up uh for example what we do is we have a montage that we want to trigger so new animation montage that's the example one and in that head over to our animation blueprint and our animation graph that gets triggered via this slot so this one's using the arms for the montage so we're going to use the same one or the same slot now there's two of them one for arms and there's actually a i don't know why it's not showing but there should be a default as well Let's head over to our grenade folder, animations. We're gonna right click, go to animation, and create a new animation montage for the arms. This is gonna be am underscore grenade. Open that up. Go to asset browser. We're gonna find the grenade throw. That would be this one in my case. I have two. You can ignore the second one. That's for the example. And now, whenever we go through, as you can see, it's playing the throwing animation. Now, you see right here, remember that slot that I was talking about? We're in the default slot, so we can click our slot, slot name, select arms. As you can see, it kind of freaked out. The animation is no longer playing. What I do is I just delete the animation and drag it back out. It's good to go. It's I don't know if that's just a little bug or what the issue is there. So for testing purposes sake, I want to go ahead and do a little bit of this in Blueprint just to make sure everything's okay. But uh, first off, we want to set off the animation event to fire. So for example, we would let go of the grenade right about in this area. So what we can do is go down to our notifies, come out here, right click, add notify, new notify, and just call it uh, throwing grenade and then press enter i already have one made so i'm just going to right click yeah i called mine grenade released so yours should look something like this with whatever name you gave it once you do that head over to your animation blueprint i'm going to go ahead and delete this and you'll be met with this screen here if you right click search for whatever name you gave that uh that notify so in my case grenade released you'll see event anim notify grenade released 
and this will trigger whenever the animation triggers as well. So if I drag off and do a print string, we can give this a test. So I'm going to open up our first person CPP blueprints. Go ahead and open up that character. And I'm going to go ahead and go override begin play just for testing. Drag out our first person mesh. Let's go ahead and let's see. It would be play montage. I'm going to play the AM grenade montage. Uh, we don't have any slots or anything like that. We just have the one grenade or the one animation. And this should trigger. So whenever we hit play, you can see the animation gets played and it goes right back and it printed out hello. So we are good to go. We can go ahead and delete all of this in our first person character because we know we're, you know, we're functional. So let's see. Uh, we are good to go here. We can close down our animation montage. We can close our grenade asset down for now. And we want to go ahead and trigger that montage inside of C++. So in our grenade tutorial character, we want to set up the input for throw grenade. So whenever we press a key, it calls this function. So the way we do that, go to settings, project settings, find input on the left-hand side, action mappings. I'm going to delete reset VR and fire. Add a new one with the plus sign and let's call it throw grenade. And I'm going to bind this one to G like so. And just file and save. In our character.cpp, go to your setup player input component function. Just copy one of the uh, bind actions. Paste it in. Change jump to grenade to a throw grenade. So it would be whatever you have your binding set to. IE pressed. So when we press it. And then the class we want it to be for. So in our case, we want it to be a grenade tutorial character. And the function we want to call is throw grenade. So now whenever we press G, this function should be called, in which case it should spawn the grenade and attach it to our right hand. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, well, we don't need to test that. I'm positive it'll be fine. So let's see. We grab the grenade. We throw it. We attach it to our hand. Now we have to play an animation on it. So what we're going to do is we have to get our animation instance. So you anim instance. Let's do just anim instance equals mesh 1p. Get anim instance. I'm going to wrap this in an if statement. So if anim instance, meaning it's going to get it, and if it's valid, we are good to go. We're going to play a montage. So anim instance, do its montage play. Then the first parameter is the montage to play. So you anim montage. And everything else we can ignore. We just have to set our montage. So we want to go ahead and set that up. So in our grenade tutorial character, let's go ahead and set a variable for our montage. So again, I'm going to copy one of these U properties, change it from a grenade to was it you anim montage? Let's do anim montage to or grenade montage. Would be a better one. Like that. So montage to play. If grenade montage. We play grenade montage. And that will trigger everything we need. So let's go ahead and compile. Make sure whenever we press uh, G that it actually plays the montage. Okay. Delete hot reload. Let me rebuild it one more time and it'll be fine. There we go. Let's go ahead and relaunch the editor. Reopen the assets. So we want our first person character. Over here we have our grenade class, which we have to set. So set that to BP grenade. And then our animation montage, which I messed up on. So it's not a uh, 
Ah, what do you call it? I want it to be a T subclass of, just like this guy. So that should be the class of the montage to play. So now when we hit build selected, or recompile, I'm curious if hot reload will work for this or not. But what in the world am I doing? Yeah, let me see. Okay, I'm being stupid here. Control Z. Okay. And I'm an idiot because I copied the blueprint read write. I need to copy the edit defaults only. Yeah, makes more sense now, doesn't it? So now we can actually edit which one we're going to use. So go ahead and recompile again and relaunch up the project. And then we should have an option to actually set the montage to play. Back to our first person character, come over here, we have our grenade montage, select AM grenade for, our, well, montage. Now whenever we press, was it, was it G, we play the animation, as you can see, it is rotated off, but you can see the grenade and everything like that, so I press F8 and I look over, you can see. So, the problem we have here is due to the way the animations are set up inside of the first person animation blueprint. So if I open up the idle animation and look at the first person character, so if I here's our rotation. If I were to disconnect this idle animation, look at it again, as you can see it's off center. So the animation itself is not well the animation itself is rotated I think like 90 degrees. Well, we don't, the animation that I made is not, it's normal. So what we're going to do is just for now, in the sake of this video, disconnect our idle animation. It's not needed. Uh, we can actually do that for everything if we wanted to. I'll do the same thing for a run real quick, and that'll be it. I don't plan on, well, doing much else. So now we just need to reset our rotation and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is just our location. 0, 0, leave the z-axis, and rotation, 0, 0, 0. We want to rotate it by negative 90. So now we're facing straight out of the camera. Now when I hit play, if I press G, see? there's the animation. So a wee bit close to the camera, so I'm going to drag this guy forwards. about 20. Not bad. Let's go up a little farther. 25 and go down some. I want to take the camera and just drag it in a little closer to the center of the capsule. And that is much better. You can see we're not detaching the grenades. They just keep piling up. But that is a lot, uh, just a lot better. Okay. So we have our animation set up, everything's playing, we have it for the arms and the grenade. In the next video we're going to set it up so that it actually detaches the grenade at a certain point when we trigger it, such as how we have this event here in our animation blueprint. Then we want to add an impulse to the grenade after we set its velocity to zero, so that way it only goes in a specific direction, and that direction is where we have it. Well, that's going to be our control rotation. So whichever direction we're looking, like this. Well, hopefully that was helpful. And yeah, we will continue in the next video. And as always, if you want to help support me, I have a Patreon-only series for recreating the Team Deathmatch game mode with a weapon customizer and all that stuff. You can head over to my Patreon. That's linked in the description. Purchase that if you wish. It's a one-time purchase. Or if you want to just help support me in general, you can find all the other tiers listed below in that uh, in the Patreon. If you have any questions or anything like that, and you don't know where else to look, you can either you can join my uh, Discord that is also linked below. Ask away, and I'll try to answer whatever questions you have. So yeah, I will see you in the next video.